Hello everyone and welcome to Math Mantra. Today in this video, we will talk about the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is one of the most important mathematical theorem that has been proved over time by Pythagoras. There have been a lot of debate about who first invented and used these Pythagorean theorem successfully. There is a lot of theories and facts about some of the ancient time before Pythagorean came up with this theorem and has been utilized and used. However, in this video, I'm not going to talk about who and when it was invented. Rather, I will try to focus on how we can go about proving the theorem itself. Now, there are more than 300 ways to solve this or prove this theorem. But today in this video, we will talk about one of the graphical way, in my opinion, which is the most convincing and most visual way to understand how this Pythagorean beautiful Pythagorean theorem works and holds for any right angle triangle. Now Pythagorean theorem is also known as Pythagoras theorem. So for those who are actually familiar with Pythagoras theorem, it's essentially the same as Pythagorean theorem. It's a right angle triangle with a square of the two sides and addition of those squares of two sides essentially becomes the square of the hypotenuse. So without further ado, let's get started. So in order to prove the Pythagorean theorem, let's draw a right angle triangle. Let's give the sides A, B and C, where C is essentially going to be our hypotenuse. A and B is basically the vertical and the horizontal lines and that essentially is a right angle 90 degree. Now in order to prove graphically, let's copy this triangle four times on each four sides. So essentially we will form a square of a side A plus B. So let's go and copy this triangle three more times. As you can see, we copied on top and on the right side. And here we have copied that all the way down. As you can see, the triangle has been rotated three, four times, right? In order to make the square. For example, on the one side, you'll have a long side of triangle and the short side of triangle as well. And that repeats by itself all four sides, right? So the length of the square, length of the side of the square is essentially A plus B, right? So the area of the entire square is A plus B, the whole square, right? Now there is another video that we made that talks about how to go about proving the A plus the B, the whole square is essentially nothing but A square plus B. 2ab plus b square. Now I'm gonna put the comment, put in the comment section down below the link for that proof that we've shown graphically in the previous videos, as well as I'm gonna put the card up here, so you can view the a plus b, the whole square is how can we go about proving that as a square plus 2ab plus b square. But in this video, since we are focusing on proving the Pythagorean theorem, we're not gonna go into details about a plus b, the whole square. We're just going to assume a plus b, the whole square is essentially a square plus 2ab plus b square. Now let's put that on the left side and that is essentially the total area of a plus b, the whole square, right? So that is the total area of the entire square that is shown with the red here. Now let me remove the red square a plus b so that we can focus on smaller areas. So for triangle, the area of the small triangles is essentially going to be one half times the base times the altitude, right? One half times the base times the height, right? All these are right tri angle triangle. So one half times A times the B is the area of the triangle. So, and we have four of those. So we, we're gonna put one half times the A times the B times four, right? So that is the, area of four of those triangle. Now we're going to add the area of the green square. Now, since it looks like a diamond shape, it's, it's rotated. Let's go about proving that it essentially is actually the square. Let's start by assuming the side B and the side C forms an angle and let's call that angle as a theta. Now, since the triangle, the total area of all the angles essentially becomes 180 degree, right? So A and B forms 90 degree in the left bottom triangle. And then 
B and C forms the theta because that's what we assumed, right? So, so the side A and the C forms the angle and we can call that angle is 180 times 90 times theta. That is 90 minus the theta. So 180 minus 90 minus theta gives us 90 minus theta, right? So that let's call that 90 minus theta. Now, let's copy the same angle for, for all four triangles. So, so we will give the theta to the angle between the sides B and the C, and we will give the angle 90 minus theta to all the angles that fo is formed by side A and C, right? Now, as you can see, if you pick any of the line, let's, let's pick the left vertical line. Now that line is straight line, so the angle is 180 degree, right? Now it's been divided by three different angle that forms straight line. The one that is formed between line B and C, the other one is formed between line C and another C, and the third and the last piece that makes it the line uh, makes the angle between line A and the C, right? So the total of all three angle has to be equal to 180 degree because that's a straight line, right? So let's add them together. Theta plus 90 minus theta. So theta theta cancels out. So essentially that is 90 degree. And 180 minus 90 gives us 90 degree that is formed between two sides C and C, right? So that angle is 90 degree. Now the same way we can prove all four sides is the 90 degree. So that essentially has a diamond with the four sides equal length of C and four angles are 90 degree. Hence, it is a square, right? So the area of that square is basically a C square because side is C, right? So let's add all the areas of smaller pieces, four triangle and one square, and compare that area to the whole A plus B, the whole square, right? So let's write it all four triangle, we already have it one half times the A times the B times four. So we cross four and one half and makes it two times A times B, right? And we're gonna also add the green square now that we have also proved that C is a square. So that is the area of that square is C square, right? So let's now compare the areas on Let's add all the areas for the four triangles and the square to the big square with the red color A plus B the whole square. So A square plus 2AB plus B square equals 2. Now four triangle is basically 2 times A times B, right? So 2 times A times B plus the C square. Now as you can see, 2 times A times B is on both sides of the equation, so we can cross them out we can cross them out and what is remaining is a square plus b square is equal to c square easy isn't it so that's the beauty about the pythagorean theorem once you put it in shapes it's so easy to prove it visualize it and understand it better so i hope this video has helped you understand and prove the pythagorean theorem very easily now there, there are like i said in the earlier in the video there are 300 ways to prove the pythagorean theorem so quickly i'm going to talk about one more way to prove the pythagorean theorem let's put the whole thing together like so so this is the same figure that we had four triangle and the green square right let's draw a red square all around it which is the size of a plus b right and let's rearrange the shapes in between. Let's move the C square outside and let's rearrange four triangles. So as you can see, we've rearranged the triangles and what is left on the left side is a shape that is unfilled, right? So let's divide that shape into two pieces. Let's draw a line and let's now try to understand what is the shape at the left bottom corner. If you see the two sides of that shape is B and the B and the angles are 90 degree. That means it's a square of a side B. So that area of that shape is B square. Let's do the same thing at the left top corner. And as you can see, the sides 
of that shape is also 90 degree and the length a so that means it's a, a square easy isn't it so all we did is we rearranged those triangle we did not move any of the triangle outside of the red lines we just moved the c square outside and the two shapes that remained after vacant after removing c square may make up the space for a square and b square so that essentially means that a square plus b square is equal to c square right because we did not generate new areas we are not missing any areas we're exactly able to fill those areas beautiful isn't it so let's move it back and see one more time how it works let's move a square and b square out this time rearrange the triangles and move the c square back in beautiful isn't it so there's one more way there you go to prove the pythagorean theorem or the pythagoras theorem proves by itself beautifully so i hope you like this video and if you like this kind of videos subscribe to our channel thanks hope to see you in the next video